doing just fine. Yeah. Are we ready to play here in Mono Massive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of couple of tweaks to the setup and we're ready. Yeah. Nice. For those people that doesn't know your band, would you mind to intro introduce yourself and give us some biographical hints? Biography master. Um, we are Assemble the Chariots, um, formed in 2008, so we are a pretty old band, but we just released a new album a few months ago, and um, yeah. Yeah, reborn in 2024. Yeah. With our new album, our first album, actually. Yeah, it's our debut album. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, what happened between 2008 and 2024? Well, I think most of the time we're spent to like find the sound and the current lineup is pretty fresh as well. So during all that time, it's been just crafting this whole thing until we're ready to release a debut album. So, yeah. yeah, I think in, in one interview I said that since the album itself, officially the production took about four years from very beginning to being pu 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 published. So I think I think before that, Kevin has had all the ingredients to the songs, but now he perfected the stew, you know? So yeah, we kind of always knew what we wanted to do, but we just didn't have like the resources to do it, so. Yeah, and you know, I, I joined the band in 2017, so I actually got to enjoy them as a fan way before I enjoyed, uh, joined the band. So, from a fan's perspective, I remember always liking the fact that they, they always put up like professional sounding stuff. That was me when I was like a really young metalhead in Finland. I was proud to have my country have a band that sounds, you know, professional. And, you know, now that I've been in the band myself for seven years I, I think uh, yeah my opinion has still not changed at all so you don't want to publish something that's not what you want to publish right you don't want to rush things so many bands go to the studio and it's expensive as shit and they're like oh well we just have to publish as it is right and it's understandable but I'm glad that Kevin has decided not to take that route and yeah talking about your debut album uh, it's going to be a trilogy, am I right? That's yes. Correct. Yeah. So, tell us more about uh, the topic of the album and about this trilogy and when, more or less, in, a, in what time frame uh, the other two albums are going to come, more or less, because of course you never know. <laughs> Maybe you can tell about the story a little bit more. Right. So, in as short as I can make it, uh, our story is a science fiction fantasy, and it tells about uh, a group of group of aliens called Aquilegians. They are the the peop They are um, the biggest enjoyers of the goddess of light and her gifts. To the world and then uh, there is an evil presence in the universe which seeks to shut out all the lights in, in the galaxy and in the cosmos and so obviously as a race that uses light and is very you know light powered like we are electricity powered here in the human earth they are light powered right so um, they have become a very intelligent, super like like stage stage two civilization almost, you know, and um, so that's obviously something that the eternal darkness, the Evermerk, and everything behind it, they see as danger. So they will attack Aquilegians, and that's what the the album one, Unyielding Night, that we published. That's what it tells about. And um, the future albums and every other release as well, in all forms of media, will, in one way or another, uh, expand the universe that we now published with the album. 
So not only is it a concept album, but it's a concept band. Okay. Yeah, and also the future releases we already have, like the whole big picture in mind only has already like figured out how episode two and three is going to be. But um, writing the album is something that takes a lot of time, like composing the album because we want to compose the story. So it's not just like I go my my archives and see for riffs. It's not like that. I have to write specifically for his story, so it takes a lot of time. So we can't give like any time frame, but yeah. not soon. I, mean, yeah. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, you just released this one, so yes, yes, that's true. Usually, few years are in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least. Yeah. But there's one thing I think I can say, and it is that in in. In future, what is different in our process is that we are now aware what the process requires. Yeah, now it's More easier to plan how the releases are going to be. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if 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 in the future everything goes well enough for us to uh, be able to do this as our official jobs as well, it also this obviously going to you know make the process a little faster yeah. so you got to buy our albums yeah it's important <laughs> buy albums and everything the band is said yes yes Support. buy everything <laughs> ask nothing <laughs> just like in the real world <laughs> uh, talking about uh, the sound of the album uh, why did you choose to use uh, this certain sound because uh, it's strong it's uh, Orchestral, it's uh, it's good, it's good. <laughs> so tell us more. I think the whole idea was to make a movie soundtrack, but in a form of a metal album. So I wanted to be it to be like a modern metal album with very polished metal production, but then incorporated with. Blockbuster movie trailer soundtrack like orchestral. So yeah, I think that was the, the main picture. How did you came up with uh, this uh, concept idea? Mm. Well, I've been I've always been a huge nerd, and so some of the concepts that are now in in place have been in my head for years because I didn't know five years ago I didn't know I was gonna make an actual effort into writing like a science fiction fantasy story so I never really sort of again I never polished those ideas before but they've been there for a long time and now just when I think after Empress we realized that we have something in our hands that we want to sort of take further um, and yeah so because Empress was about a god of light even even a malevolent god of light you know so not not necessarily light as in good and dark as in bad because you know none of the things in the world are necessarily good and bad but I figured that, well, now we need the people that view this god as the god of light. And so we came up, I came up with the story of Galactic Order, and it felt like a war song, like a, like a glorious fight or whatever. And so between those two songs, the main story had already sort of formed in my head, but when we finished writing the lyrics to Galactic Order, I was like, okay, now this is already some, something has, has been established already, so now all we need to do is sort of um, make it cohesive. And it sort of it started snowballing from there, and now, now on, I cannot, I, I can't imagine writing songs with any other perspective in mind except this fucking nerd story and I love it. I'm not like a professional writer or anything. I'm absolutely the opposite of that. But 
this is a good medium to practice with because people don't necessarily, you know, people will judge your writing differently if you're claiming to be a fantasy sci-fi writer and you publish your first book compared to you're like, hey, I'm a science fiction nerd and I want to try out my writing and spread my wings in this form, which is totally not your normal sci-fi publishing method, right? So people will be more forgiving and I will also be able to, you know, practice more freely. Yeah, yeah. But it's still, I want to emphasize, it's not like something I do around, it's something I take very seriously and I, I you know, I take care of my baby, yeah. you know. Yeah, something also to consider is that um, the concept is to make the sci-fi story in a form of metal music. Yeah. So the same loss doesn't like exist. Yeah. You, you need to make it work as a lyric as well. Same thing goes with me when I I write a song for a metal band. It has the features of like a movie soundtrack, mm. but when mixing it with a metal band, you cannot do it exactly as you would do the soundtrack, so we need to make compromises on that. So, um, you told that you are a nerd. Are you a nerd in uh, a way that you are playing games, uh, are reading books, are into movies? What, what are you into more? Gaming especially, uh, like, especially, yes, but by saying that I'm a nerd, I mean maybe something more I, I mean, I'm just genuinely interested in everything and anything, and it's like a personality trait. And I don't have, I don't have the filter in my brain that tells, I think most people around me that well, this is not a subject that you most likely would like. So I will switch myself off. I don't have that filter. I'm like, oh fuck, nice chair, man. I wonder what's it made of. I wonder what sort of polish did they use to make it and sort of and that that sort of mentality that sort of it's not a mentality because that's something you practice that sort of personality yeah. that sort of uh, something that is an inner yeah so that sort of makes me automatically sort of into games and worlds that are crafted very precisely because fundamentally people who make those kind of products are the same yeah. so they know how to tickle brains like this and you know I know how to read what they've written and by that I mean I'm not just reading a story I'm reading I'm trying to trying to read what the writer wants me what the writer wants you know to sort of tell yeah. behind the story and sort of I, I realized at one point that why not just like, because I, I read this stuff, I play this stuff, you know, I watch this stuff, I listen to this stuff, and I sort of, you know, research this stuff. Why not create this stuff? Yeah. But it's all thanks to Kevin uh, making all this music that just makes, it gives so many emotions because there's so many layers and, you know, there's so much in there that I would feel... I would feel like a traitor to the music if I just wrote some lyrics, right? So, those two things combined, sort yeah. of, yeah. is, yeah. So, yeah, sure, I'm a nerd, but not like you are, I'm not like a Star Trek nerd or like any yeah, specific yeah, yeah. nerd, I'm just a nerd. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it was a good explanation, yeah. because it's always interesting to see where people uh, get their ideas and... Uh, how people work because we are all different mm. so it's quite uh, quite interesting yeah and talking about interesting things uh, let's talk about uh, music so what are your uh, main influences i know it's a hard question because uh, most of people listen a bit of everything but uh, there is always something that uh, put a bit more into your songs for you yeah um well, I have a pretty fucked up music taste, as the personally, but... Um, it's true. Yeah. I listen like, 80s Japanese city pop and stuff like that, but for inspiration, I listen to a lot of movie soundtracks, 
and like, well, I don't listen that much metal to be honest, because it's boring for me usually. I I can listen the the classics, you know. I like old school stuff, like black metal and you know that kind of stuff that has emotion in it, because. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, most, most, not most, but many metal musicians are not listening to metal music. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. actually, many times when I ask, what are you listening now? I don't listen anymore metal music, they answer. I listen to everything else because yeah. uh, when you play, sometimes you just need to get away from it. Yeah, it's, it's a. Um, it's understandable because it's a, a big part of your life and sometimes you need to disconnect yeah, from sure. that. But also, I don't want to be influenced about like from the other bands and what they're doing. It's a subconscious thing. You listen something and, and yeah. you start doing it yourself by accident, so I try to avoid that. Yeah, well, that, for me, that's the reason why if if I find some new and interesting band and then listen to them and find out that they're not that interesting after all, that's the biggest reason for me is usually that I can hear the three bands that they've all listened to and nothing else. So that's why my answer regarding to metal would be the same. I don't listen to that much metal. And if I do, it's some certified classics that I've already enjoyed or already listened to. But, but I don't know. I think I, I'm sort of I've sort of always had like three lives when it comes to three like three personas when it comes to this shit. Metalhead has always been one, but then there's the blues, soul, country, funk, you know, old American music, pretty much like anything from a hundred to fifty years ago that time period anything that came from America uh, and was played mostly by electric guitars you know electric guitar music and then um, rap and I think that's what we have in common you're yeah, like a true. yeah you're like a rap guy as well yeah for my uh, personal playing I think I just take influence from rhythm itself mm. and you can find rhythm everywhere uh, and it just usually in metal it might be a little bit boring so most of the times I don't take my inspiration there but from somewhere else. Mm. And I think it's important to listen to a bit of everything because uh, you can find uh, interesting sound in every kind of uh, music. Yeah. So it's important to be open-minded. I think that people that, that watch all my interviews, I, they may think that I'm repeating myself always, but mm. it's true, it's true because we need to open-minded when it's music and then uh, of course everyone has its own uh, kind of music uh, and sometimes it's not a uh, genre in particular of course I, I listen to metal most of the time but uh, it's uh, not the genre itself it's not the band itself uh, mm. uh, it can be a song it can be an album it can mm. be a sound in a particular yeah, yeah, yeah. song and that's why you know I, I just want to sort of make this clear where none of us are shitting on metal obviously yeah. like obviously we're a metal band obviously we fucking listen to metal we love metal we live and breathe metal you know that's what yeah, we do yeah. but i think i'm speaking to all of us when i say the reason we answered this way is that i think we just want to give our perspective outside of the classic yeah fuck yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. because like as much as this genre this scene is all about that brotherhood you know I, and I love it um, it's also sometimes that kind of a setting can lead to like a very close perspectives and well everyone knows metal is either like metal folk are either the most open-minded people in the world or, or the most, most closed minded people yeah. in the world uh, when it comes to music or you know other things as well so <laughs> So, uh, you know, um, we, we sort of want to have the open mind aspect about yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, since we are talking 
about the music and being open-minded. Uh, so I want you, each of you, to give uh, an artist uh, or a song or an album to check out that is not metal. So, Kevin, you are the first one. Surprise. <laughs> Am I allowed? I have to ask this because my library is so huge. Am I allowed to sift through one of my? Oh no, never mind. You, I have the album. I have so the album. Say, say no. Before it's it go away. yeah. It's 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 in Finnish, right? But um, it's something that is super important to me, and it's this guy called Lasse Mortensen, and he. <laughs> I'm not joking about this. He's fucking great. Uh, late 60s uh, recordings of Lasse Mortensen I can't remember the name of the album because he made like 40 albums or something like it's one of those you know Finnish music industry pioneer well, guys who made all the translation songs you yeah, know yeah. so um, yeah Lasse Mortensen's album the one album that has Hello Dolly uh, House of the Rising Sun and Songs like that, but they're all in Finnish. Okay, I will check them. Out. Yeah, it's uh, now that I've proven that I remembered the album, I'll just get you the name of the album so that yeah. you can get it easier. But yeah, you see, it's here, it's here. This guy, okay. it's already you. You yeah. can see yeah. that. Uh, yeah, nineteen sixty nine was the year they published it, but all the recordings are from sixty six or sixty seven or sixty eight. Yeah, it was just called. I think it was just called Blasse Mortensen. Yeah, so it seems yeah. from Yeah, from his, his name, yeah. Yeah, so... Well, speaking of Spotify, search for 80s Japanese city pop. That's my go-to. Hey. Nice. Yeah. City pop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty hard one, but I think I'm gonna say Dirty Loops. It's kind of like a fusion jazz band, like a virtuoso like play. Hey. Check yeah. them out. The Turbo album. That's yeah, all of the albums. Sings. And one of my favorite bass players, Hendrik Linder, plays it on that. Album, so. mm. You know, talking about the bass, uh, sometimes when I go to see metal bands, I enjoy I enjoy the, the band uh, all over, but when it comes to the bass, <laughs> sometimes I, I'm a bit sad because I don't uh, see that technique. I don't see that, mm. you know, some, it happened a few times that uh, you go and see and there is the bus solo and then it's like, finally, mm, yeah. <laughs> or using all the techniques and uh, hearing, clearing, clearing the sound. Yeah. Uh, I used to play bass, bass so mm. that, that's, why, that's why I got to that. So that, it's, it's amazing to see this guy play in the band practice place because, you know, uh, he plays fingerstyle. He, he doesn't use picks, um, and so like our tempos are sometimes quite radical. It's still, like his hand turns into like a big cartoonish mush because you can't see the fingers at all. Yeah. They're so fast, you know. And and he's always slapping and doing some funky shit in between other songs. You know, it's I always like it because, like I said, like I'm into like the bluesy, funky soul thingy. Yeah. I don't still. This is now our official because I'm, I'm forcing you to do it now. But we're gonna form a fucking <laughs> funk band, yeah, and now it's sure, official. Yeah. And I'll tell you the name later and the drummer, <laughs> but and and everything else. I'll tell That's you later. But good. we're we now have we have another yeah we have another band now. Yeah. And it's yeah. funky shit. It's funky shit. Yeah. Okay. So now I have to ask. Uh, no, you, t you told your favorite best player, but the name of three best players that uh, are influential in your playing or that uh, you grow up uh, looking at like they are. Yeah, uh, they've actually changed throughout uh, all my playing years. But I think when I started, uh, there was this local band and there was this one guy, Hyka, who played bass. He had a six string bass, Bus he played finger style. And uh, it, it just looked so cool. It looked so cool. And uh, just you know, I actually took a couple of lessons from him as well. He was a big influence when I started, like at 14, 15 years old. 
Uh, then after that, I think for Henrik, Henrik Linder is one. Uh, second would be, I think I have to say, Victor Wooten. Mm. He's a bit famous guy. And the third one, uh, I'm gonna stick to the slap styles. I'm gonna say Marcus Miller. So maybe maybe those guys. And also a lot of the bands that I listen to, I also usually enjoy their bass playing as well. But uh, yeah, but those are the like main bass player guys yeah. that I look up to. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry, it was uh, something that I had to do ask about bass because of course. not always the best player is into into the playing in the interview, and not always uh, uh, the best has that much uh, relevance. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is, that's true. This is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, you played uh, several gigs around Finland. You played also in Tuska this year. Mm. I was at Tuska, but I was not able to to see you. I don't know where I was doing some interview. No offense taken, the line was pretty long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Actually, I you, you, you were in the Qualt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that I got in just one time and I thought I'm going to die because it was so warm, too, yeah. too hot. It was yeah. too hot and I was like, with the camera. No, I, I'm not going to be able to take photos. So many people and yeah, yeah. so many good bands in there. And yeah, but it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but today I'm going finally to see you live. Nice. <laughs> but uh, do you have other gigs coming? Actually, um, we have um, the next show is in Helsinki Techfest, and then the day after we're performing at Aino Arena with Lost Society. Yeah. And after that, we go into um, join Brumir and Morsumita on their tour. And we're playing like four or five shows with them around Finland. And I think that's everything that's been announced so far for the rest of the year. But, and then yeah. there's a bunch of TPAs. Always TPS. Yes. 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 Are you planning any any tour outside of Finland? We would love to. Yeah. It's in the works. Yeah. Yeah. The peer peer correct answer is yes. We are playing a tour in yeah. the future. Yeah. Yeah. Very <laughs> <laughs> nice. At some point, <laughs> and if someone wants those guys to play there in your country, just Try to ask. Yes, try. Try to ask. Yeah. Try to <laughs> ask the, the, those that the, <laughs> those that are uh, organizing events. Uh, try to get them there. Mm. Okay. She but said it. Yeah. We have done with this interview. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank it was you. a pleasure. And uh, would you like to say something to the people that are watching uh, this interview? I'd like you to. Rem uh, I'd like to remind you of this Finnish saying. I think you know what it is. <laughs> It requires a hand gesture. Heavy on paskimillaankin like parasta. And <laughs> never forget it. And the other saying? Stay heavy. Yeah, stay heavy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>